Backwards compatibility has been a bit of a hot topic lately, especially with the news that PlayStation is going to be adding select titles from their older retro catalog to the PlayStation 4 and 5 via a new version of PlayStation Plus. Something that I think happens sometimes though is that we get lost in the weeds a little bit and really talk about the big picture in terms of the importance of backwards compatibility and keeping access to these games, which is, yes, all very important. But I want to take a little bit more of a focused look and just talk about those backwards compatible games on Xbox that I personally love and cherish and enjoy the fact that I can just just download them, play them on a modern system and not necessarily have to break out older hardware to access them. And I want to start with a game that actually is the thing that got me thinking about this recently, the Secret of Monkey Island Special Editions. If you've been paying attention to gaming news over the past couple weeks, one of the things that was announced and revealed is that we are out of nowhere getting a third Monkey Island game from its original creator, Ron Gilbert. The franchise overall does have more games that have been released, but as far as what the sort of original Envision trilogy was, we never got that official third entry, and it's finally happening. And if you've never experienced the series before, and the announcement maybe got you a little curious, you've heard other people talking about it, you can play the first two games in a special edition version that was released on the Xbox 360, PS3, and is also still currently available on PC. The special edition remakes of the originals are incredible and actually rank amongst some of my favorite remake games that have been released, primarily because they actually walk this really nice balance of, yes, there is a remade version of the game you can play featuring voice acting and redone artistic visuals, and it is a great looking game, but if you want to, at the simple press of a button, you can swap between that and the original version of the game, featuring the original menu, the original interface, the graphics, lack of voice acting. It plays like the original version did. So you can have that classical experience if you want, or experience something that feels a little more up to date with the remade version. These games are definitive examples of the classic LucasArts style point and click adventure games. They're honestly amongst my favorite in that genre entirely. Personally, I really can't get over the fact that we're really seeing a third entry come out this year. If this is a genre you've been curious about, but you've never actually played, I think these are a great place to start. And honestly, I just think in general, the games have aged extremely well. Not just the remade versions that came out back in 2010, but even just the original style that you can still play in these special editions, I think hold up really well. Next up, I wanna talk about a 360 RPG that is completely trapped on the 360, except for the fact that we do, of course, have backwards compatibility. This never got a PC release, so the only way to play it is on an Xbox system, and that is Lost Odyssey. If you've never heard of this game, this was a JRPG that came out very early in the Xbox 360's life cycle. It was one of the first games to come out of Mistwalker and is in many ways actually a spiritual successor to a certain era of Final Fantasy. The story was written by Hironobu Sakaguchi, who is the original creator of the Final Fantasy franchise. It features music from Nobuo Uematsu. It's very much a game that, while it wasn't made by Square, shares a lot of DNA in common with that franchise. It was a beautiful looking game for its time, and thanks to the way that Xbox handles backwards compatibility, it ages up really nice on current hardware. While it does have some noticeable Final Fantasy DNA in it, it does also go in its own direction in a lot of different ways. There's a lot of experimental mechanics, the sort of storytelling that goes on in it. I don't really want to go too in-depth. I'd rather for people to just kind of try it out for themselves and experience it. I'll be honest, it doesn't necessarily rank super high in my list of favorite JRPGs ever, but as far as being a kind of unique piece of history that is locked specifically to the Xbox platform, I really do think it's one worth checking out and playing. It is a great time to play if you're a fan of the genre, especially from the kind of older era, because while it is a 360 release, in many ways, design-wise, I feel like it has a lot more in common with the RPGs that we were seeing during the PS2 era. Bit of a tone shift, next game I want to talk about is Might and Magic Clash of Heroes. Now the name Clash of Heroes might make you think of certain mobile game titles, but this is completely unrelated to that. This is a spin-off game from Heroes of Might and Magic from back when Ubisoft was experimenting a lot more with the IP and was making a bunch of different styles of games using it. And this is my absolute favorite one that I am so sad they never made a sequel to. The game originally was actually a DS exclusive, but it got a remade version that was ported to PC as well as home consoles on the 360 and PS3, and as far as home consoles go, backwards compatibility is the only way you can really easily experience it. The game is this really interesting fusion of genres. It's kind of initially based and rooted in the strategy and RPG elements of the Heroes of Might and Magic franchise, which it's spinning off from, but turns it all into a puzzle-style game. Basically, you play through a story mode where you go between different factions, each of which have their own unique units and mechanics, and you move units around to create combos that then turn into attacks that attack the enemy player, and you take turns trying to build up the right combination of defenses and offense to defeat your enemy. 
Full honesty, this is actually probably the backwards compatible game that I put the most time in on my current system. Partially because my wife Christine really loves puzzle games and in general that's a genre I'm not super great at, especially the ones that are very time intensive. But Clash of Heroes is one of the few that I've gotten really good at and we're actually on a pretty equal playing field with it. In fact, after I make this video, she's gonna remember about it and we'll probably end up playing it again very soon. This really is a unique gem of a game that I haven't seen anything else properly tap into again. There's been some mobile titles that mess with some of these mechanics, but then also mix that in with microtransactions and gotcha stuff, and so it's really not the same at all. Uh, really, if you're at all a fan of sort of puzzle RPG mixtures, this is an incredible classic that you should check out. The single player campaign is fun and challenging combat, but if you know someone else who also enjoys playing puzzle games competitively, you can get a lot of hours out of this one. Asura's Wrath. Quite possibly one of the most over-the-top, ridiculous action games I have ever played, and another game where I feel is ultimately pretty unique. There's a lot of other games out there that, yes, do share some similar mechanics or concepts or kind of story flow, but none of them really come together in the way that Asura's Wrath does. This is a game that came out on 360 and PS3. It was published by Capcom, but made by CyberConnect, probably most popularly known for the dot .hack franchise of RPGs. And it's this game that kind of pulls its world together from this mixture of different mythologies and religions. And the basic idea is that you're playing this very angry god who's getting vengeance on a betrayal that happened to him and most importantly just wants to get his daughter back. The whole setup is actually done like you're playing through a TV series. There is an opening credit section, there's a last time on, there's like a commercial break section. I mean, you don't actually get commercials, but you do get the little kind of just transfer screen like you're going in and out of them. There's this wild energy behind the whole game. And to be honest, the core gameplay mechanics are relatively shallow. You walk around punching stuff as hard as you can. It's very quick time event and intensive, but none of that really bothers me because the kind of action that's happening on screen, the storytelling that accompanies it, is really engaging. Honestly, the only kind of warning I have about this one that I will mention is that this was during Capcom's little more experimental phase with DLC, and the true ending of the game is locked behind DLC. So if you buy it and play through it, you're gonna get sort of a cliffhanger ending that happens and then you have to go buy a separate DLC to play it. So it does drive up the overall cost of the game a little more, which is annoying. But honestly, I still think the total cost is really worth it, especially if you're ever able to catch the core game at a discount. Next up, I wanna talk about side-scrolling beat-ups. It's one of my favorite classical genres. It's one that we've seen have a bit of a resurgence over recent years with some titles coming out like the newest Streets of Rage, we're getting a new TMNT game, and a really good one that you can play thanks to Xbox backwards compatibility is Guardian Heroes. Now this game was originally a Sega Saturn title that came out back in 96, but because the Sega Saturn didn't do super great in the US, it didn't get a whole lot of traction over here and became kind of a hidden cult classic for those that did get the chance to play it. But it did get a remastered version that was released on the Xbox 360 back in 2011. Similar to the special edition of Monkey Island, this is another remaster that allows you to swap between the classic visuals or the redone ones. So if you want that kind of early 90s vibe, you can still play it. And that actually is the way that I prefer it. Uh, the game very much does feel like an early 90s anime in terms of the sense of humor and over the top action. It's a side scrolling beat em up that mixes fantasy RPG elements. All the playable characters are different character classes and so they handle very differently. One of the things that really does stand out about this game though is the branching story paths. Basically after certain stages, you'll make a decision of where you wanna go next or what you wanna do. And this branches the story out considerably adding a lot of replay value. There are a lot of classic beat em up games that I love, but yeah, it sometimes gets a little tiring when you're doing the exact same stages in the same order with the same plot every single time. With this one, you can not only mix up which characters you're playing as, but also change your decisions in each playthrough and see where you end up storyline wise and how everything plays out. Now, most of what I've talked about here is Xbox 360, but there are of course also a number of original Xbox games that are playable in backwards compatibility as well. Some of these are really big ones that get mentioned all the time in these conversations, like Knights of the Old Republic, Elder Scrolls III Morrowind, Crimson Skies. One that I actually went back and played recently though and had a great time with is Jade Empire. This is an RPG made by Bioware after their success with Knights of the Old Republic and before they had their really big breakout hits with Mass Effect and Dragon Age, and it's one that never got explored past its initial game. This is an action RPG that takes place in a fantasy world heavily based on Chinese mythology, and one of the things that really sets it apart from a lot of Bioware's other work is the focus on core combat being based around martial arts. There is some stuff about it that hasn't aged particularly great. I think there is definitely a reason why when people talk about Bioware, games like Mass Effect and Knights of the Republic get discussed a lot more. 
before, but this is, I think, their most unique work, especially from those older years, that if you're a fan at all of their later games, it's one that I think is worth a look. So that's just a fraction of the backwards compatible stuff that I love having available on modern hardware. There are, honestly, so many more titles that I don't have time to talk about. I tried to not focus on too many really big name ones. I don't think people need me to tell them that Red Dead Redemption or older Gears of War games or Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion are worth playing. Those are all great titles as well, but these are just some personal favorites of mine that I absolutely love. Let me know down below in the comments what some of your favorites are. What games have you been playing on backwards compatibility that you just love having the opportunity to play there? Are there games that are still missing from that list that you wish would get added so you could play them again? I know I've got a few that I'm missing. Maybe that'll be a follow-up video to this. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button to let me know. If you didn't like it for some reason, hit dislike as well. It's always good for me to know. Subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you guys later.